Across the channel from Sir Richard Attenborough, director Louis Malle has established himself as not only a giant of French cinema, but a European filmmaker of world renown. He quite simply makes classic movies. The last Metro still grips us with taut drama. A roi l'enfance is Mal's haunting childhood memory of German-occupied France. Atlantic City and My Dinner with Andre will be screened as long as there are projectionists. Louis Mal's next movie is called Damage. It comes from Josephine Hart's best-selling novel, and we're pleased to welcome him here this evening. Thank you for coming. You optioned Damage when it was still in galleys. Well, she, <coughs> she sent it to me. Yeah. Uh, Josephine Hart. She she asked her agent to give it to me, and uh, so it was about four months before the, before it was published. I think there was already a lot of interest in the yeah. what struck studios. you about what was it about this story uh, the, of of an obsessed love that turns a man from a life of conservatism and order and uh, solid reputation into an obsession with an affair. Oh, a study of classic story, isn't it? <laughs> Study of chaos. Uh, so it's like a Greek tragedy. Uh, I thought it was uh, incredibly difficult to do, which is always something that interests me. Um, and uh, I'd not dealt with anything like that for some time. A very disturbing and even shocking uh, tale of uh, you know what uh, love can do. <laughs> to to us. All right, let me just talk about this. Let me, I'll lay it out. You lay it out for me. Uh, Stephen, played by Jeremy Irons, is a 40-ish member of Parliament, uh, a conservative member of Parliament, and he meets a woman. Pick up the story as to what happened to him, and 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 then because I'm interested in how you communicate what you wanted to communicate about this obsession. Well. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I want to answer you because, because I think it's the, the advantage of being a filmmaker that you don't have to, to explain yourself in, in words. Actually, this is a, a script, for instance, uh, written by David Hare, has uh, very little dialogue. It's, uh, things happen and they're Especially in, a, with her eyes. in a, a sort of mysterious way. And, you know, it's, it's the sort of the classic uh, love at first sight. Uh, they meet in a boring reception at the French embassy, and uh, they are, she comes to him to say that, uh, she says, I to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a friend of your son. And uh, then they start looking at each other a little more than they should. And uh, the, 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 I was trying to make the point that uh, their, both their lives was just about to change, you know, and uh, and then it it goes on. I mean, it's not in one scene. Then uh, they meet again, and then then she calls him, and uh, and he says he says, uh, st uh, "Give me your address. I'll be there in an hour. I'll be there in an hour." And he does, and 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 that starts his torrid relationship. It start it's a torrid relationship but at the same time because he's he's a essentially a good man. He's also, of course, uh, tortured because he's, you know, destroying his family. It's his son's his son, his wife, fiance that he's having also, this affair with. Also, you know, he's used to live a very sort of clean yeah. and respectable life. Okay, but here's life. my point. I know you don't want to talk about this, but let me try one more time. Well, here's, it, is, it must, it, what you've got to do is show why these two people, she, are entering to this, uh, crossing this divide and entering into this place where they are, I mean, they really are saying goodbye to a lot of things and creating a lot of dangerous uh, for themselves. And he's giving up order and reputation and everything else. It's his brother's fit. I mean, you have got to show why they are so obsessed with each other in order to make it work, right? Well, I th it's rather difficult because, you know, um, it happened to a number of friends of mine. It's Who felt, uh, fell in love with first glance and somebody and didn't risk their career and everything because of this? Yeah, I've seen that happen. People sort of <laughs> drop out and, uh, and uh, um, but, uh, but it's not, it's very difficult to explain rationally yeah. <laughs> by definition. It's something that uh, you would explain after it happened, but on, not on the moment. And uh, my, I, I had to, I try to show that, of course, it was like a magnetic attraction and a, and a sexual attraction, but also that 
there might be an element of uh, self-destruction in this relationship. On well, it clearly is. On both sides. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's bound to end uh, tragically, mm -hmm. and they both know it. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's a lot about pleasure, but it's, there's a, a certain amount of, uh, I don't know, violence and despair in it. You think a Frenchman is better, this is an English story, but somehow because it's love and passion, a French director is better able to do this? Well, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but I can tell you that I work with this uh, wonderful uh, English writer, David Hare. And yeah. uh, Who wrote my uh, Miss Saigon, did he? No, no, well, he, he, he wrote uh, plenty. He wrote a number of yeah. great plays, yeah. and he's also a director. And uh, when we got to those scenes, we discussed them, but uh, he refused to write them. He said, well, you know, I'm English. This is not my terrain. This is all for you, Louis. Good and luck. You wrote them? Good luck. <laughs> I didn't write them. Uh, we improvised them with the actors. All right, set this scene up. This is Jeremy Irons playing Stephen with the, the young woman, and I think it ends with she saying she's a damaged person. Set up the scene for me. Well, it's a scene after. Uh, at, it's rather at the beginning, but uh, it's when he's really hooked. And uh, there's been before that a scene, um, a family dinner, which was a little difficult for him. Uh, and uh, then uh, he because his son, who was a fiance, is yeah, there and all that. Yeah, his son was uh, you know a wonderful young yeah. man, and uh, so he follows her home and he comes to see her, and uh, they have a, a they sort of grab each other and they have a <laughs> rather warm. Uh, you know, love scene, and then after that, you know, they're on the bed and they talk, and uh, she talks about her brother, and we'll know later that the brother has been was a real trauma of her yeah, childhood because right. he was desperately in love with her and committed suicide. So she's a damaged person and a survivor. And, that's, and she she's very honest because she warns him that she's trouble. Yeah, roll tape. Here it is. You see, if you can imagine, the worst thing that could happen ever in the whole of your life, well, that happened to me. My brother killed himself over me. I had to decide. I made up my mind. Because I could have gone under. But I wasn't going to. Remember, damaged people are dangerous. They know they can survive. Yeah, that's nice. Um, may I turn to, is it a true story that, that when you met your wife, uh, there was a five-hour lunch at the Russian Tea Room. It is true, yes. Yeah. A very long lunch. <laughs> and the, was the, it? The, the, the customers for dinner were coming in, <laughs> and she suddenly remembered she had to go to the ballet with friends, and so we, uh, yeah, well, that's, that was pretty much that. I, I, I think at the end of this afternoon, we knew pretty much it was not as violent and desperate as yeah. damages, but uh, but uh, but we knew that something had happened, and it was uh, it was uh, forever. Alice Arlen, a friend, I think, uh, has said that between the two of you, uh, it's like she would be the only possible person for you, and you the only possible person for her. There was this sense of to know the both of you that. Well, you know, this, it's, it's terribly nice to say that because uh, uh, Candace is somebody extraordinary, so I'm very flattered. But uh, um, I think so because uh, I'd been married once and uh, I was decided never to marry again. And uh, Candy had been, you know, yeah. this has been, this was a really <laughs> sudden and uh, you know, it's it's really interesting because uh, we sort of knew each other without knowing each yes, other. I know the feeling. Yeah. 
and uh, we would meet in social, you know, dinners or whatever, and sort of almost avoid each other. I think, and we've often talked about it, I think what happens is we knew that we shouldn't fool around. Uh, the, maybe the moment was not, uh, not come, but we had to, uh, you know, I think we knew. I think we knew and, uh, for, for, for quite a few years. And then uh, one day I called her and uh, invited her to lunch, and well, this long lunch. And you really best knew then. Best lunch you've ever had? Best lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a daughter. Uh, and now you spend a lot of your life in Paris, and she spends a lot of hers in Los Angeles, and then you get together, and, and, and somehow that works. Well, it, it works, yes. Uh, you know, it's not that... Uh, I, I, would, I would suggest the, the... I've tried to suggest the producers of Murphy Brown to shoot it in Paris, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. can't, can't. Murphy goes on location. <laughs> <laughs> FYI work, comes yeah. to Paris. Actually, I, when I'm not working, I'm, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time in Los Angeles, like I'm doing yeah. now, but uh, after damage, but, uh, and they spend the summer in, in France, but, uh, you know, she's uh, stuck there for, uh, yeah. for a while because uh, I was happy to, to read that Cheers was off the air because... Uh, after 11 years. <laughs> so it means it may only hope. be 11 years, that's there right. Hope. Murphy will make, after 11 years, you may get her back. The, um, a couple of quick things. One that is that you had a battle with the censors on this thing. They gave you an NC-17, uh, and you said at that point, I'll never cut this film. And I did. And you did. Yeah. Shame but, on me. Shame on you. Well, Seven you know, seconds you cut, right? Yeah, well, we changed the order of a scene, and we did a little monkey business, but uh, basically, uh, fortunately, it's the same scene, and uh, and they accepted the the change and uh, gave us an R. I had not realized because uh, that uh, NC-17 was such a disaster. It means anybody on 17 can't come to the film. Well, it's is that what it means? No, it's it's just that they. They used to call it X, yeah. which means, uh, you know, this is pornography, right, right. which I thought was, I don't think the damage has anything to do with pornography. But, uh, and they, and they, no they does, changed right? the name. They called it NC-17, which technically means forbidden under 17. But actually, people look at it still as an X. So it doesn't work for us. And, you know, especially, I, I'm very proud of damage, and, uh, and I hated them to uh, sort of, the stigma of, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it was not, it was not right. Yeah, we Americans sometimes get obsessed by sex, uh, which you Frenchmen, I suspect, think we're a little bit prudish, don't you? Well, no, I, I, I think it's it's different. For instance, what what strikes me as well, a nudity uh, is a better word, not sex. But <coughs> what strikes me, yes, as a as a foreigner, as a foreigner who lives here all the time, but yes, uh, I know. <laughs> is this, uh, <coughs> yes, there's a taboo on nudity. And uh, where it seems like uh, violence is completely uh, acceptable, you know. I don't know. It's the uh, National Rifle Association. I, 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 uh, I know. But uh, but it's it's really like that. It's uh, it's sometimes I must say, if I was a censor, there are certain things, certain violence that I think would be much more obscene than any nudity you'll ever see. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Uh, next project is it underway, or are you still in, in the process of no I'm I'm just going to to take uh, time off I'm I'm getting very uh, lazy and uh, I might I'm even considering retiring oh sure and live in Los Angeles yeah. Yeah, it's a long way from being a cameraman for uh, for uh, Jacques Cousteau wouldn't it it's a long way but uh, well you know some people think my films are a little sort of yeah Little sort of water. Under water. Well, I read that somewhere. Someone somewhere. said about that. Yes. But look at this. When you look, this is a filmography, which is a sort of like a bibliography. And look at this. From 1953 to 1992, uh, Alamo Bay and Lacombe, Lucien, Pretty Baby, Atlantic City, my data with Andre Crackers. Thank you for coming. Thank Pleasure you. to have you very much. Bye Louis Mall, thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow, a special broadcast of an hour with NBC News anchor Tom Brokaw. See you on Friday.